All right, this is it. This is the moment of truth right here. I hope I plugged everything in right. Well, I'm doing something I never thought I would ever do. I'm building a custom PC. I have always been the quintessential Apple guy. I own one of almost everything they make, except for that $50,000 Mac Pro, which I'm gonna have one day, mark my words. And I already know that statement has got a bunch of PC people typing away, save it, I do not give a shit. For what I do every single day with video and photo editing and running my business, as well as within the business with all the crazy graphic design work that we do, Apple has always just fit and performed the best. But over the last year of this business, I've added a whole bunch of new equipment and the vast majority of it is not Apple compatible. These companies don't wanna pay the Apple tax and all the added costs involved with developing for both platforms, and I get that. So I've had to add a couple PCs to the mix. In the print shop area, I've got a pretty decent one running the embroider machine. I've got a brand new Dell XPS last year, fully maxed out with every option you can get, and it's decent. I'm still not a fan whatsoever, but it gets the job done. That's for sure it's got more than enough to run that machine and way more machines in the future. But when it comes to the printer out here, the cutter and everything else involved with the vinyl side, the computer running this stuff is a massive piece of shit. I'd originally picked up this laptop just to run my ink mixing software for screen printing and that was it. So it's pretty much got nothing in it. It was like a couple hundred bucks. Nothing special about this whatsoever, except for the fact that the keyboard is half French for some reason. Thanks, Canada. But when I got my Roland wide format printer last year and discovered that the software doesn't work on Mac and that it was completely unreliable running in parallels, this thing made its way out here to run the RIP software and it's, it's gotten the job done, but it's done a pretty bad job of it. And now with the new cutter in the mix, there's a completely new workflow, a whole bunch of different new software and this thing is hating life now. <laughs> Trying to open up Adobe Illustrator on this thing is a painstaking experience. So it's time to say goodbye to this thing and build something proper. Let me start this off by saying I have never built a PC before. I haven't even had the slightest interest in ever doing it. When this whole situation came up, I was just gonna go out and buy something, plug it in and go. But then I remembered a little while back, I was talking to my Roland Tech Brock, who's really knowledgeable on this subject. He had showed me a build list for a compact little PC that was really cost effective, that would be more than enough performance to do what I need to do in here. So I was about to order that exact list of stuff, but then I kind of started getting into it a little bit. I started learning more about the subject and I don't know, I started getting a little bit more interested because I like to build shit. Anyways, by the time I was done, I had taken that list he gave me and just completely tossed it out the window. Sorry, buddy. I decided that if I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do this the way I normally do things and go completely overkill, way above and beyond what I need because that's way more fun. Plus, I'm gonna be adding a bunch of new equipment here in the near future. I wanna add another cutter, another printer. There's a DTG coming. There's a few other things I don't wanna talk about yet, but there's definitely a bunch more equipment that's gonna be running off of this thing, so why not just build it beefy now. This thing is gonna have two jobs and that is it. I do not give a shit about gaming. I don't give a shit about really anything else. The only thing this thing is getting built for is to run machines and to run the software associated with those machines. And as well as do a little bit of light Adobe Illustrator work to kind of set up jobs or do any tweaking if we have to. Anyways, let's start putting this thing together and I'll get into why I chose what I chose as we do it. And again, I've never done this before, so hopefully it goes well. I can build a motorcycle with my eyes closed, so how hard can it be? So the motherboard, the base of this whole operation. I went with the MSI mortar. Um, really, I just wanted the micro ATX form factor. Basically a perfect trade-off between size and expandability. I didn't want something too small and I also didn't want a big ATX case somewhere around here that I'm gonna kick over. So this seemed to be perfect. Plus it had Wi-Fi built into it and it has a 2.5 gigabit ethernet built into it, which is something I definitely wanted because I'm gonna have a network built for everything when we move to the new shop. So that's a plus, it already has that. And plus when you call something mortar and have cool graphics all over it like this, it's gonna get my attention. <laughs> For the CPU, I went with the Intel Core i7. I'm sure a lot of people are gonna ask why didn't I go AMD, because apparently that's the hot thing right now, and really it comes down to the cost. I was working within a budget, and this fit in. And why I went as high as the i7, because for what I'm doing right now, I could have realistically gone with the five, or maybe even the three. I'm kind of just future-proofing myself, because some of the equipment and software that I'm gonna be adding here in the very near future state that, at the very minimum, I need to be running an i7, so I'm prepared for that. All right, I'm new to this, but this seems pretty easy. Pop this little latch thingy out. This fucking shit, whatever that is. All right, I was told just line the little arrows up. There's that one, pop that little guy in there and just let it fall in. Close the thingy, latch down. Holy shit, that's tight. That's it. Cool, we got a brain. 
moving on. I'm adding a 500 gigabyte M.2 drive to this thing. This is a Western Digital Black really just to get the quicker boot times out of it. I'm still gonna add a bigger storage solution yet. The reason I went with this one is just, look at the packaging, man. Come on, that whole Spec Ops look thing, it got me. Guess this thing goes behind here. This seems pretty straightforward to put in there. How the fuck does this work? Oh, there it goes, cool. Boop. Oh, how smart is that? They got a little C-clip on the screw so it doesn't pop out of there. It's genius. Man, this is just going swimmingly so far. I say that after putting two things on. <laughs> Next. RAM, I went with the Corsair Vengeance Pro, 32 gigabytes worth of it in a dual channel configuration. That way, if I wanna double that up later on, I can do that. Really no rhyme or reason as to why I went with this one. I still don't fully understand the difference between all that shit, but this one's white and has lights in it, so come on. And I actually ordered their light enhancement kit too, which is just a dummy stick. It has no RAM in it. It's just a white stick with the lights in it to fill the empty slots and make everything look a little cleaner and nice, which is something I really wanted to do. But I ordered a set of them. They got lost in transit somewhere. I reordered them again two weeks ago and it's looking like they're lost again. So yeah, I already know those two empty slots are going to drive me nuts. And it's going to be like a week before I finally say fuck it and just order two more of these and go up to 64 gigabytes of RAM and be done with it and have the thing looking a lot cleaner. But for now, this is what we got. I was actually wondering if it's gonna matter what slot I plug these things into when there's only two of them and there's four slots. And I found out, yes, it actually does matter. But thankfully on this board, they were smart enough to have the foresight to just label exactly where they go. So that's awesome. That made my life a hell of a lot easier. Let's get these things in there. Oh God, that is tight. <sighs> yeah. Let's not make fun of my cooler, okay? This is some, I don't even know what this motherfucker is, but this came off Amazon, some knockoff brand thing. This was one of those parts that was a total afterthought. Originally, I was just gonna run the stock cooler that came with the CPU, and then I was looking at it, I was like, eh, I don't know about this thing. So I went out and looked for one. I couldn't find a name brand one that I could A, get in time, and B, that was white. So I found this thing. This was like 30 or 40 bucks. And was, eh, seems all right, so it's going in there. It also has RGB, so I can go full PC nerd spec. I already put the back support plate on and these little standoff posts in, so we should be good to go to just drop this top plate on and stick the cooler in. And son of a bitch. So this top mount plate thing is riding right on top of the heat sink for the M.2 drive, and it's like, it's really on there. Well, only one way to fix that, I'm cutting it. Right, let's see how we did here. Factory finish right there. I don't know why they made these thumb screws. They're a real asshole to tighten. That looks like about the size of a P to me. I'm good with that. We're running it. Probably should have done this before I put the RAM sticks in. That would have been smart. This is going way too easily, I feel like. Something terrible has to happen soon. Well, so far, so good. This is actually going incredibly smooth so far, so let's hope it stays that way. I think I've gone about as far as I should on this portion, and it's time to move on to the case and start getting stuff inside of that. And again, I'm just guessing right now. I watched like one five minute video on how to do this before I started, and that's about it. Corsair Micro ATX case. What is this thing? A 280X. I went with it because it's got tempered glass all over it. We can see all that RGB shining through there. Who doesn't want that? It's got some RGB fans in the front already, so it saved me from having to buy those. They're already ready to go. And it's really white. And for some reason, I'm drawn to that lately. Shit, for like the last 15 years, no matter what it is, anything I've built or bought for myself has always been blacked out as much as it possibly can be. And I feel like I'm just starting to get tired of that lately. And I don't know why, and for some reason now, I'm just going the complete opposite and getting everything white. I don't know what it is. I'm going through a phase, I guess. All right, it's already got the standoff posts in there, the IO shields already on this board, so I'm gonna dick with that. Should be able to just drop this thing in here. Imagine if I did drop it. Holy shit, that would suck. I made a way bigger deal of this in my head before I started. I feel like this is gonna be way harder. This is just like big kid Lego. <laughs> Uh-oh, that's not looking good. I think this cooler <laughs> might be too big for this case. Shit! I said this was going way too easily. Damn it, that's what I get for buying some cheap bullshit knockoff cooler. So it looks like that stock Intel cooler is gonna make its way in here after all. This probably just pissed me off to the point where in a week from now, this thing's gonna end up water cooled. I guarantee it because yeah, that stock Intel cooler is not staying in there. Now, excuse me quick while I fix that mistake. <laughs> I 
I somehow managed to track down a graphics card during what's apparently the great graphics card depression of 2021. I don't know what it's like wherever you live in the world, but here in Canada, there is nothing, and I mean nothing, to be had anywhere. The only stuff that I could really find out there when I was online shopping was like, the worst of the worst stuff and the prices were so crazy. Thankfully, I'm a pretty resourceful guy and I don't give up very easily. So I went beyond online shopping because there was nothing to be had there. I went old school. I picked up the phone and I started calling people. Remember when you did that with phones? I looked up every mom and pop computer store I could find. None of them had online stores, just kind of crappy little websites. I called all of them and sure enough, I actually found a graphics card at one of them. And I ended up with this bad boy, a GTX 1650 Super. I did still have to pay pretty much double the retail price for this thing. Even though those people didn't have an online store, they definitely weren't stupid, so whatever. And honestly, it's way overkill for this application. I probably could have just gotten away with the internal graphics on the chip, but since I'm gonna be doing so much Adobe Illustrator work on this thing, setting up jobs, tweaking stuff, whatever, I wanna be able to take full advantage of the GPU acceleration in there because it really makes a big difference. If I had to be sitting there moving things around, lagging out, Ooh, there would have been a mouse flying across the shop real fast. Oh, hey, and since I mentioned Adobe Illustrator, now's a good time to mention that this video is sponsored by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of killer classes to help you level up your creative game. Adobe Illustrator is the backbone of this business, hands down. It does all the graphic design work for us. It has applications on the screen printing side of things, it has applications on the vinyl side of things, it has applications absolutely everywhere here. So it is probably the most valuable asset in this company. Skillshare has seemingly endless classes on Adobe Illustrator covering everything from beginner to pro, and you can take them all in for less than 10 bucks a month. And because they're sponsoring today's video, Skillshare is giving away a free trial membership to the first 1,000 of you guys who join the community by clicking on the link below. So definitely check that out. That's how I learned everything I know about Adobe Illustrator to this point. It is valuable as hell. Trust me on this. All right, now that I just helped pay for a little bit of this PC build, let's get back into it. All right, let's get this in there. This seems pretty straightforward. Money. Samsung one terabyte SSD, probably way more storage than I'm ever gonna need because I have a Dropbox business account and pretty much everything goes on there. I do have offline backups of everything on the NAS in the house, but I mean, these things are cheap as hell, so why not plop one in there? I might need it. Corsair CX550 power supply. Again, this is another one of those things where I didn't really care what I got. I started looking into power supplies and learning about it and it seemed like a way more complicated topic than I cared to learn. So I went on one of those little calculator things, entered all the components of this and it spit out the amount of wattage I needed and it was actually under 450. So I just bumped up to this thing because I saw it and thought it was cool. It was white and had RGB in it and matched the rest of the build nice. So it's going in. The only shitty thing I just noticed here is that I'm gonna have to put this thing in upside down, which is kind of dumb considering Corsair made the power supply in the case. They they didn't seem to think that one through because if I place it in the right way with the power switch facing the right direction and the power cord obviously being at the very bottom, the fan is blowing straight at the motherboard instead of out the exhaust side of the case, which is, yeah, that's kind of dumb. So I guess I gotta put it in there upside down, whatever. But one thing I didn't know about this power supply is all the cables are white too, so that's pretty sick. This is actually gonna look pretty nice when it's done, I think. But I gotta figure out where to plug all this stuff in. There's so many cables here. And I, yeah, I have no idea. So this is where, this is probably gonna begin to get difficult. I guess I'm just gonna plug everything related to the power supply in and just work my way back from there. Front side's looking super clean, minimal wire showing, but that's the easy side. I gotta deal with this rat's nest. This is terrible, but I've got a couple ideas. I think I can use these empty drive bays to hide a few things and just, I don't know. I'm gonna start winging it and see what I can come up with. Well, it's not amazing, but I mean, it's not terrible for a first try either. I think now that I've got it all set up, there's definitely some things I would do differently in here, but for now, I really don't give a shit because I realized halfway through that that I must be real confident that I plugged everything in right to start tying all these cables up like this. So yeah, I'm gonna try turning this thing on first and hopefully it works and then if it does, I'll go back off camera and redo this and make this look a lot nicer. But yeah, let's see if this thing turns on. All right, this is it. This is the moment of truth right here. I hope I plugged everything in right. Uh, oh wait a minute. 
<laughs> I should probably turn on the power supply in the back. All right, let's try again. Oh shit. We got lights, we got fans, things are turning on. Why do I not have anything on the display? I gotta solve that. Oh, never mind, we're good, it just took a minute. Holy shit, I don't know what to do from here. This keyboard has some fancy lights in it though, and this thing's looking pretty cool. Now I'm really bummed I don't have that lit up cooler in there. We're putting more lights in this later. I'm water cooling this thing and lighting the shit out of it now. Dude, I think I got everything on the first try. CPU's there, memory's there, both storage things are there, fans are working. Everything should be good, so. I think I can go ahead and put Windows on this thing. I'm just gonna unplug that SSD first just to make sure that Windows installs on the M.2 drive. And um, yeah. All my software on here, machines are plugged in and working, all my print profiles are set up, spent a little bit of time on the aesthetics and ooh, so good. I honestly can't believe how well this went considering that this morning I knew nothing about what I was doing and had never done this before. Everything worked on the first try with the exception of a couple small things. And I mean little things like two drivers and just a couple performance settings in the BIOS that obviously I would have never been aware of because I've never done this before and have never really laid hands on a PC too much. But thankfully I had Brock who I mentioned earlier in the video, he jumped on TeamViewer and helped me sort that out real quick. So thank you, sir. The first thing I did was toss a pretty big file into Verseworks on this computer and the other one so they could rip head to head. And this one did it in just about half the time. So that's a pretty big difference. And VersaWorks is not the strongest rip software out there. It's kind of on the lower end. It really only uses like 8% of a machine like this tops. So when I add a third party rip software into the mix that can take full advantage of this thing, my rip times are gonna come down significantly. And that's one of the main reasons I built this thing was to add a third party rip into the mix. Like I mentioned in the Suma install video, that little laptop would not have handled any of them out there. So now that I've got a machine that can, it's time to start testing them out. And so far I've done the research and it's between two of them. Right now it's Flexi or Onyx. And yeah, I gotta do the trials of each one and see which one kind of fits my flow better. So once I figure that out, I'll let you know. Well, I think the biggest fight I have on my hands now is to somehow hold myself back from installing Elder Scrolls on this thing. <laughs> I do not give a shit about gaming. I don't give a shit about really anything else. I do not give a shit about gaming. I've never PC game before, and I don't wanna go down that goddamn rabbit hole. But I gotta go find some sort of mobile standing desk for this big rig, so thank you guys for watching this. Drop a thumbs up on it for me, and we'll see you again in the next one. Shoo.